just got done with my last cup of espresso. You know, espresso is something that is wonderful to have, not only before dinner, but even after dinner. Well, why don't we get started? My favorite ingredients right here, pasta, yes. We're gonna do pasta with ham, mushroom, asparagus, and my secret ingredient, truffle oil. I love truffle oil. Why don't I show you exactly where we're going? In this pan, I already put a little bit of olive oil, we got it nice and hot, and we're gonna be adding our wonderful sliced garlic. Together with the garlic, we're also gonna put some uh, chopped onions or shallots. In this case, I'm using shallots. I li like them nice and small so that they can completely almost melt inside this flow. I'm gonna reduce the heat a little bit because I wanna show you the ingredients that I'm going to be putting in together. Look at this, it's wonderful. What we have in here is a collection of fresh shiitake mushrooms and asparagus. Asparagus is a fabulous ingredient. We've chosen the young ones, very soft, very small. You can actually eat them right away without having to peel them. But there is something you need to do with asparagus when you use them. I wanna show you exactly what I mean. When you get an asparagus just like this, the one thing that you want to do is to snap the bottom of it. And I'll show you, right where it snaps at this point is where the most tender part is left over. What you get rid of is the one that's very woodsy. Putting together a few of those, why don't I take one or two more and do it for you as well. You take the bottom off, you take the bottom off, and then with your knife, you start slicing them. Now, very careful with this. You see, I always keep contact with the board, go back, my fingers are staying in the back, quite protected, you know. Rule number one, start and finish with the same number of fingers. But you see these wonderful rounds that we've done? This is exactly the type of cut that we would like to have. Let's put this together in here with the rest. And let's move on to the mushrooms per se. The mushroom is a little bit tricky. It has a nice stem. This stem in the mushroom that we're using, a shiitake mushroom, is definitely something you wish not to interact. Very tough, very difficult to digest. So you cut that off and then you cut the mushroom in nice, fine little slices. When it gets to this point, the trick that I use is to do this instead. You turn it and you continue with your slicing. So all that there is to it, not much really, but. It's always nice to have someone else show it to you. The garlic is cooking nicely, is picking up a light, light browning to it. And the next thing that we're going to do at this point, we're going to be adding the rest of the ingredients. Uh, you can change the flow as you see fit, but usually what I like to do is to add the things that uh, take a little bit longer to cook. In this particular case, what would take a little bit longer to cook is the asparagus. So here we go with the asparagus, we add it to it. I wish you could smell the aroma. One of the most fabulous things as we're cooking is to truly smell the flow of the aromas as they're coming together. The garlic is imparting its natural aroma, which we all know very well. And the fact that we're cooking it very simply, softly, not with a harsh heat, is bringing it out very gently. The fact that the garlic is also somewhat thick, it gives us the ability to cook it for a long period of time so that it will cook and stay soft, wonderful, as it will be one of those things that eventually we will taste in our mouth. It's almost like a little chunk of something that will melt. Remember, we're not going to be doing this right away. It will be over a longer period of time. It will be a good 20, 30 minutes as the sauce is finished. And in that process, the garlic will go from raw to softly cooked just right. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to add our mushrooms. I prefer shiitake mushrooms, but you can use any type of mushrooms that you want. And you should be so lucky that you can get porcini coming your way, fresh porcini that is. What a wonderful thing that would be. Now, mushrooms, especially like the shiitake, I like them because they maintain their own texture. In spite of the fact that right now are fairly big, over a period of time, they will soften up and reduce in size. Uh, if you were to make a mix of mushroom, what I would propose in, together with the shiitake is to use cremini and white button mushrooms. The various uh, mushrooms, as they place themselves inside the pan, not only will create a wonderful color, but they will give you a completely different mixture of textures. To me, this shiitake has the most interesting texture, very meaty, very flavorful. Uh, if you really want to play a trick on uh, your friends, what you could do is get some dry porcini mushroom, put them into a food processor, turn them into a powder, sprinkle them on top of the shiitake three to four hours before you're ready to serve them. Of course, you will have sliced the shiitake already. By the time the shiitake hit the pan, they will have already absorbed, picked up completely this wonderful aroma from the porcini mushrooms, and you will have a mock porcini, very inexpensive way to use porcini if you don't have them available. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to add the ham to this mixture, and you can use ham if you have the opportunity, and it's possible for you to find some at your local Italian deli. What I want you to use instead is prosciutto. A lot saltier and truly wonderful to have. At this point, 
after you cook it for a few more minutes until something and everything in here really starts to soften up. Uh, so I'm doing this a little bit earlier. You would like to add wine. And wine, use any kind of wine you want. White wine that favors you. Bring it up to a high heat. Stir to dislodge the brown bits that have stuck at the bottom of the pan. Why is that so important? The brown bits are nothing more than, uh, how could we say, juices that have leaked out from the various ingredients that now have stuck themselves to the bottom of the pan and because of the high heat, they have reduced. Those brown bits are wonderful flavor multipliers. Once the wine has evaporated, and this will take you a few moments, uh, at least two minutes or so on high heat, the next sequence of ingredients that you want to bring together are the following. You go with chicken stock, a little bit of cream, just to give it some depth. And then for color, I like to add as well tomato sauce. Now these three combinations are gonna be fabulous for us. We have the cream to add density and viscosity. The chicken stock is going to be the liquid binder that as it reduces, it's going to give the sauce its most trustworthy flavor. The tomato sauce not only colors, uh, colors, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I translate from Italian in my, not only colors the sauce, but it gives it a wonderful pink hue. I know uh, there's nothing really special that I'm doing right now, but when I cook, I like to be close to my food and I like to stir it a whole lot. My wife says, what are you seeing? I'm seeing the shape of things to come. As a matter of fact, what I want you to do is stay tuned because I'm going to clean up here, right, everything in front of me. I'm going to reduce the sauce to proper consistency and I'll show you exactly what that is. I'm going to drain the pasta and when I come back, I'll show you exactly how to plate this in such an elegant, wonderful style that will teach you how to turn your home into your favorite restaurant. Just a moment, I'll be back. The sauce is ready. We just got to reduce perfectly. I have to taste it, make sure it's right. Mmm, man, I'm good. All right. The last secret ingredient, and this is just a touch of the finest truffle oil. Oh, this is really going to bring out a fabulous flavor. Here's the pasta that uh, we have drained. We're gonna add it right now to the sauce. A lot of my friends ask me, Nick, why is it that you need to add the pasta to the sauce? Why don't you just pour the sauce on top of the pasta? Well, there is a reason for that. Um, let's see if I can paint a picture for you that you can connect with. Imagine the pasta to be a tightly wound coil with many layers to it. And what we're doing as we're reheating the pasta into the sauce, we make sure that the sauce penetrates the pasta on the inside, layer by layer by layer. In this flow, in this process, we ensure that when you take a bite of pasta, not just the sauce on the outside interacts with you, but rather the pasta and the sauce have become one. You know, I know it's like a poem. I know it's almost looking at this as if it was a painting, but this is what you have to do when you prepare food. You've got to get into it. Feel the soul of the food, understand how the food interacts and ultimately what it will do for the palate, not only your own, but those of your guests. I'm going to let this uh, finish up in here in just a second. You know what? I always like to do a little flip of the pasta, just because it reminds me of my old days at the restaurant. We're ready to serve it. A couple of little additions before we take this home to the uh, plate, so to speak. And here we are. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm of the opinion that pasta is one of those things you get to enjoy every once in a while with... Uh, great freedom to it and when you enjoy it let it be a good plate of pasta and abundant duet too abundanza we say in italian a couple of little touches i want to do some freshly grated parmesan cheese on top of it this pasta is better with parmesan cheese but if you're adventurous and you would like to do something completely different the next thing that you could do is actually do it with a little bit of fresh provolone cheese sharp provolone not the uh, easy one and then just because there's a little matter of color here we go with some parsley and here we are, once again, this wonderful pasta for us. Now, stay tuned, because I'm about to come back with a friend presenting us with an incredible new recipe that will help you turn your home into your favorite restaurant. I'll be right back.